Edgy people love to say all politicians are the same. This isn't true, but even if it were, you're going to have to vote for one of them. So we may as well figure out who you can stand the most. It's Voting 101 for 2022 with Matilda Bosley from The Guardian, Australia. If you've been following along with this series, you now know how the parliament is structured, how preferential voting works, and how to actually fill out your ballot on election day. So it's probably time to decide who you want to vote for, because for God's sake, do not just let your parents decide for you. The best way to pick this is to keep up to date on political news. But if, if you, you want, want a crash course, course here's, here's the gist of who the big players are and what they traditionally stand for. for. This list won't include every party or every policy though, it's just an intro to get you started. So let's begin with the oldest party, Labor, which actually started prior to the Federation, so it's technically older than Australia itself. So the Labor Party formed out of the union movement. <laughs> Even today, a big council of unions actually get to vote to help decide what proposed policies Labor takes to each election. Now, obviously this means Labor has historically had a big focus on workers' rights, which is why they traditionally were the party of choice for blue-collar working-class people. Now, Labor still definitely draws electoral support from that group, but over the last couple of decades, they've also moved to really relying on progressive voters as well. Essentially, they're the centre-left party of government. They're by no means the most left-wing party in parliament, but when it comes to social issues, they tend to lean to the more progressive side. Economically, Labor prefers big government. And what this means is basically, if they had the choice between decreasing taxes or increasing the level of government support services available to people, they're more likely to pick the support services. Although, as I'll show you, COVID has blurred this dichotomy quite a bit. In the 2022 election, if they win, Labor leader Anthony Albanese will become the Prime Minister and the Deputy Leader of the party, Richard Miles, would become the Deputy PM. Now, that of course brings us to Labor's arch enemies, the Liberal National Coalition. These two parties, the Liberals and the Nationals, join forces to run the government, forming what is known as the Coalition. Basically, neither party can win the majority of lower house seats to form government on their own, so they have a long-standing deal to govern the country together. Now, these parties traditionally sit a little right of centre, both when it comes to economic and social policies. The Liberal Party was formed in the 1940s, mostly as a way to ensure that Australians had an alternative to Labor. Their focus has traditionally been on supporting business owners, both small and large. The National Party, on the other hand, was formed federally in the 1920s, mostly to ensure that those pesky city slickers didn't ride roughshod over rural Australians. Traditionally, these guys only really hold seats in regional electorates, and they have a big focus on the rights of farm owners and small town Australia. The coalition is known for being both fiscally and socially conservative, preferring small government. To recap, this means that traditionally, if they had the choice between lowering taxes and beefing up governmental support services, they'd be more likely to cut taxes. Of course, the pandemic rewrote these rules, at least during 2020, when the coalition spent billions to support people and businesses and stimulate the economy. If they win the election, Liberal leader Scott Morrison will stay Prime Minister and Nationals leader Barnaby Joyce will remain Deputy PM. Now let's move on to the largest minor party. The Greens. As their name implies, this party was formed out of the environmental movement in Australia, with the help of the nuclear disarmament movement and a sprinkling of communism here or there. Naturally, they have a big focus on the environment, and generally they're the most economically left-wing and socially progressive party. They're quite different from Labor or the Coalition, though, as their goal in the upcoming election isn't really to form government. They're far too small for that. Instead, people who vote Greens tend to like the way they drag the Labor Party further to the left. Especially in the upper house where minor parties are better represented, the more Green senators there are, the more likely it is that a Labor government will need their support to pass legislation. Oh, and just quickly, you also have the Centre Alliance, who are, you guessed it, centrists. Uh, you have One Nation. They seek to represent working class Australians, but from a hard right-wing position. 
You have the United Australia Party. You've probably seen their ads. They're also populist right-wingers. Uh, their party was formed by Clive Palmer, the mining guy, and they're run by Craig Kelly in the parliament. There's also a bunch of other political parties that will probably be on your ballot, but don't currently hold seats in parliament. And then finally, you can of course vote for an independent candidate who aren't affiliated with any party. Obviously, independents come in all shapes and sizes and political beliefs, but this year there is a decent whack of independents running on a platform of stronger action on the climate crisis. Good morning. Can I give you one of those? Now, this is barely scraping the surface of what all these parties stand for, but good news, you still have a bit of time to figure out where you want your preferences to go. And there are heaps of resources online that can help you figure out which parties most align with your values. Even just going on the AEC website website to see what candidates will be on your ballot and giving their names a bit of a Google is a really good place to start. And it also means you'll probably be more prepared than 90% of the other people who rock up on polling day. And what have I always said are the two most important things? Making informed choices that allow you to correctly fill out your ballot and participate in the democratic process. And moral superiority. Two birds, one stone.